This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It sure is great being here helping you with learning to play the guitar. This is lesson three in this series that is all about jazz guitar. I love jazz guitar. So fun. In this lesson, we're going to build on what we've done in the last two lessons with the shell voicings. So in the first lesson, I introduced the shapes for shell voicings or root plus guide tone voicings, and I explained that there. Then in the last lesson, we worked through the minor seventh shapes, the dominant seventh shapes, and the major sixth shapes going around the circle of fourths. Now in this lesson, we're going to put those shapes into 2-5-1 progressions because it's the most common progression we really see, or pieces of it, all throughout jazz. We modulate or tonicize through various different keys and we use these 2-5-1 progressions and they sound great. It's a great way to start intermixing the shapes rather than just focusing on major at once, dominant at once, and minor at once. So once we've got this, we'll be ready to start copying some chords in some tunes. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. I've got these shapes up here on the board and they are configured in two five ones. Now the first thing I want to point out is that the root movement in a two five one goes right around the circle of fourths, just like we were working on in the last lesson. So you'll see here with the two chord, we're going to start here with the root and then up to the next string in the same fret for the five chords. So that's right around the circle of fourths. And then when we go to the next chord, we're down two frets and back to the sixth string. So if we did this in the key of C, if I start on D for my two, G for my 5 and C for my 1. Now if you don't know where the 2 5 1 comes from, it's right out of the scale of the key. So from the key of C major, then the 2 starts on step 2 of that scale, the 5 is from step 5 of that scale, and the 1 is step 1 of that scale. And we usually have a minor 7th chord for our 2 chord, that's how it is naturally. And then we have a 5 7 or a dominant 7th chord for our 5 chord. And that is the function, that's where we actually, the 5 7 chord is a dominant functioning chord. The one. The 2 minor 7th is a supertonic, if you care for these terms, and the 1 is the tonic. And so those are just functional names for how the those tones and those chords function within a key. But the one that we use all the time to say, oh, that's a dominant 7th chord, is the, the major chord with a flatted 7th. We refer to that as the dominant 7th chord, which is usually functioning as the 5 7 chord of a key. So we've got our dominant 7th, and then the 1 being the tonic, or the main chord of the key can be a 1-6. It could also be a major 7th, so if you want to work, we're working with the major 6th because this gets us to the tunes that we're going to be working on first, and we'll be getting into major 7ths later. We're going to start with some tunes from the earlier eras and some stylistic things from the earlier eras, and 1-6 chords are way more common than 1 major 7th chords in the early era. So that's a sound that comes in later, that major 7th. So we're we're using a 1-6, but you could also practice these with the 1 major 7th if you wanted to. So 1-6 there. So our 2-5-1, the 1 chord's major in this key. So the difference between what we were doing before is now that we're changing, we're changing the quality of the chord as we move around that circle of fourths with the roots uh, to make play those 2 5 ones. But isn't it interesting that it moves right around that circle of fourths? So we want to get used to these shapes. We'll start with these ones first with the two five ones in the key of C major. So I've got my minor shape, and as I mentioned in the last lesson, I like to put my middle finger on the root and then use my ring finger to bar over these two notes. Just like that. But some people will use two fingers to play those, so whatever gets you comfortable at the moment. I like to do it this way because later on when we do voicings, grab the top strings and then my ring finger barring works really well. But we've got those two and then we're going to move to the five or the dominant seventh, the G7, and you want to get used to moving back and forth between those two chords. We do that a lot. We move between those two chords a lot. So just get comfortable going back and forth between those two shapes. And then of course we want to get comfortable going from this shape to the one. Six, where we actually have to shift and change our fingers. Now, with these three shapes, you can keep your middle finger on the roots and find that with 
all of them and then the other fingers just fall into place. Now for me, I finger the dominant seventh with my middle finger on that root and then index on that fret that's just lower than it and ring finger coming up on the same fret as the root. So in this case, the tenth fret. And then for the one sixth, I use my middle finger on that root index on that sixth, which is at the fret that's just lower than it. And then I use my pinky, and part of that is because later on, if I want to grab the fifth, I'm going to do that with my middle finger. But you can also play it with your ring finger, either way. So, once you kind of got the shapes going, then we can use that rhythm we were using in the last time. And we'll do two times on the one. So we've just got the two, and then the five, and then the one. Want to do that over and over until you get comfortable with it. Practice that as much as you need to until you can do it at that nice even tempo and find those chords. Then what's kind of fun is to work our way down by key. So I've got it here. If we start on D minor 7, G7, C6, our one chord. Then as we want to continue, we can turn that into our new two chord and go minor, and then we'll go to our five and then to our one. And then once we get there, we can turn that one into our new two chord. So B flat minor 7, E flat 7, A flat 6. We can turn that one into our new two chord. A flat minor 7, D flat 7, G flat 6. Turn that into our new two chord. I switched to the sharps here, F sharp minor 7 to B7 to E6. Turn that into our new two chord, E minor 7, A7, D6. Turn that into our two chord, D minor 7, G7, C6. We've worked through six of the 12 keys going down by step. Now, up here this may be like, whoa, that's more than I can take, but it's actually kind of easy on the guitar. I'm going to show you. So if we start with G minor 7, or D minor 7, sorry, go to the G7, and then go to C6. Then all we got to do right there is make that become our new minor chord and have it become the two, then to the five, and to the one. Just like that, and then have that become our new two, and then we've got a five, and a one. And if we want to go from there, we make that become our new two, five, and then we can go down to the one. Now there's no room to continue. So from here, if I wanted to make the two, I've got to find it up the octave. So this is at the second fret. That means that if I'm at the 14th fret, I can come up and go there. So from here, I got to go up to the 14th fret. And then continue down. And then I make that become minor, dominant, major. And then minor, dominant, and we become major. So it's an easy way to work through those keys. We're just going down by step, and it sounds kind of nice, just like that. And then we're back to C. Now, alternatively, I could uh, combine my practice using the other sets, which we haven't looked at yet, instead of going way up high. So if I didn't want to comp that high, or if you don't have room on your guitar that you're working on, you don't have to go that high, but we have to learn the other set, which is what we're going to do now. So we've learned the one with the root on the sixth string for the two and the one, and the root on the fifth string for the five. Let's learn the set where we have the two on the fifth string, as well as the one on the fifth string, and the five on the sixth string. So you'll notice, that the roots still move around that circle of fourths. We're on that fifth string, then we're going to go down to the sixth string, two frets lower, and then we stay in that same fret, but move up to the fifth string. That's how it works to go around the circle of fourths. If we did this one in the key of C, my D is right there at the fifth fret of the fifth string, down to the G at the third fret of the sixth string, and then to the third fret of the fifth string for that C. Now these shapes, I start off with my minor shape here. So I've got the minor shape. And then the dominant shape. And then that major sixth shape. So these should be a review if you saw the last lesson. I like to stick usually my middle finger on the root of the minor, the two chord. And you'll notice that the difference between this shape 
And this shape is merely where the index finger is located. So this one's a major chord with a flatted seventh. This is a minor chord with a flatted seventh. So I'm going to stick my middle finger and then my index two frets lower, which is a little bit of a stretch. Our fingers can learn to make that stretch. And then the ring finger goes in the same fret as the root. So there's our minor seventh chord. Now my index is already in the fret that it needs to be in for the five chord. I've just got to bring it up and put it there for the five chord. So I'm going to move my index here and then I got my middle in that same fret on the fourth string and then my ring finger one fret higher in the, in the uh, third string on the third string. And then for this one, I just need to put my middle finger, I'm going to move my middle finger up one string, or, or it's actually going down one string by sound, and then my index finger, I like to bar across these two. Now uh, something that I want to point out is that a lot of times when we're doing some of this rhythmic stuff, and we're playing these, I don't want the open six string ringing, so a lot of times I'll use whatever finger is playing the root and let it just sit against so it's muting. So all I would get is some percussive sound if I hit it accidentally so it doesn't ring as I'm doing this. Now, as I'm doing it, I'm trying to just play the three strings that I'm playing. With that same token though, sometimes I'll let my index finger uh, collapse just and lightly touch those high strings so that if I were to strum those two, they would also just sound like a uh, percussive sound. So you want to get this, this one down. One helpful thing with this shape is that the ring finger stays on the same string and then just goes down by a fret and then it comes off for the last one. So just practice that as much as you need to. And get comfortable with those shapes. Now, once I have gotten those shapes and I'm comfortable, comfortable with them, I can take this through the same pattern that we do with that. To start in the key of C, I gotta come up pretty high. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And that'll show us how to switch back and forth between these two. But if I start up all the way at the 17th fret with my my uh, middle finger, if you can, on that that minor, you can play those up high. It's just kind of high, but sometimes we end up there on the jazz guitar. Then it's going to become the minor. Then it's going to become the minor. So we go one, two, ready. We start with that D minor seven to the G seven. To the C6. Now we pivot there and make that our new minor chord C minor 7, F, B flat 6. And make that our new minor B flat minor 7, E flat 7 to the A flat 6. Then that becomes our minor A flat minor 7, D flat 7, and we got the G flat 6. We make that our new minor, G flat minor 7, B7, E6. And we got the E minor 7, A7, D6. Then that becomes D minor 7, G7, and C6. Which is as simple as that. Now, I usually keep most of this kind of comping is sort of in the center of the neck here between three frets three and ten ish is a great place to keep the root occasionally we can go you know a little lower than that a little higher than that if we need to but the best range for these chords is right in that center center part of the neck frets three to ten ish so if I do it this way when I get when I run out of room if I didn't want to go any lower here, this is kind of the gray area where I could go lower. Now I need to switch to the other set. So I just played G flat major six. So I'm going to come up here and grab G flat or F sharp on the fifth string and I'll switch to the other forms and finish that out. So when we come down to G flat six with my middle finger, at that second fret playing G flat six, we can't continue. So instead of jumping up the octave, I'm just gonna jump to the next string set and do the minor off the fifth string, dominant off the sixth string, and major, and continue from there. So if we did that, starting on D minor seven, we'd have one, a two, 
I want to ready and we got D minor 7 to the G7 to the C6 we got the C minor 7 to the F7 to the B flat 6 then the B flat minor 7 E flat 7 A flat 6 A flat minor 7 flat 7, G flat 6. Then we're up to the G flat minor 7, to the B7, to the E6. E minor 7, A7, D6. D minor 7, G7, C6. just like that. Now we covered six of the keys that we would ever play on guitar. We can cover the other six keys by just going up and instead of starting on D minor 7, we can start on E flat minor 7 or D sharp minor 7, but we're going to call it E flat minor 7. And we can do the same thing from there. So if we do that, we'll get the other six keys. So if we go ahead and do that, my, my root is at the 11th fret on the sixth string and we go one, two, ready. We've got E flat minor 7 to the A flat 7. To D flat six. We got the D flat minor seven to the G flat seven to B or C flat six, and then B minor seven, B seven to A six, A minor seven, D seven to G six. Now we got to switch to the other form. We're going to go up to G minor seven to C7 to F6. We're going to make that to F minor 7, B flat 7 to E flat 6, E flat minor 7 to A flat 7 to D flat 6. And we've gone around all six of those keys. And so now we've done all 12 keys. Such a great way to practice these. Okay, so that wraps us up for this lesson. Super fun. I love these chords and I love jazz guitar. So I hope you're having fun with this. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to take these chords and we're going to work on them with the Freddie Green style. So we're going to learn about the Freddie Green style. which is an important style in jazz guitar. So we're going to learn about it and we're going to work on using that style of playing these chords with a couple of tunes. So we're going to start working on some chord progressions and a couple of tunes. Then in the lessons after that, we'll start working on improvisation techniques for those tunes. So it's going to be great. Keep having fun. These lessons are going to be coming out on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for the time being until the course that's coming out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays concludes, and then they'll move to Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So these are replacing uh, Theory Thursday and Technique Tuesday lessons for a little while uh, until we can move them over to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then Technique Tuesdays and Theory Thursdays will be back. But we got lots of great lessons coming out Monday through Saturday on the channel, so stay tuned, keep having fun, take care, and we will see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.